it doesn't mean you'll get time okay. to I was recovering from travel too so we'll you know take yeah. that with a grain of salt so this can be either part a and part b can be three or four rounds okay we'll do we'll check in at three Arisa, because it's just okay. too but for anyone doing this later on on our time um, or in the future feel free to add on a round if you feel fine okay um, I was also thinking a lot about the athletes doing post Ironman slash they look at this a week later, right? Or in a big training block, yeah. this might be a bit much. So we'll we'll see how this goes for anyone. Okay. Eight to ten split squats per leg. Okay. Um, you can do this with your foot on the ground or foot elevated. We've done okay. both, but we'll talk about that again. Followed by ten goblet squats. I know it's another squat that's on purpose. Okay, we're trying to just get ourselves under two feet this time instead of one okay um you can rest between those two things by the way um i would recommend resting after the goblet squats instead of in okay between, right <laughs> so split squats per leg eight to ten goblet squats if you want to rest you can rest you're getting a rest in some ways you're doing push-ups with the rotation okay. um i would say for if you're doing more of a recovery piece um, we have some thoracic or upper back stretching. So a push doing push-ups is a bit much, meaning you're in a big training block, you need a break. It's okay if you change this into a thoracic okay. opener stretch, which I'll cover as well. So that's an that's an or for the push-up okay. situation. Um part B is eight per side, okay. dumbbell floor press, or 16 total plank pull-throughs so this you have some options here okay. um so give me options based on where people are at but we'll we'll still practice both Risa and we'll I kind of will bias the the first piece and the final piece is every minute on the minute or about 45 seconds of work and for 15 seconds of rest of alternating lunges okay alternating either tuck-ups or v-ups just some kind of core piece so I have v-ups tuck-ups dead bugs you know, insert thing here. Right? Um, and then Superman's just a little bit upper back extension. Okay. Just, right. So active on part C, but not super intense, just movement. Make sense? Okay. Um, so let's just start with our cat cows first and foremost. We'll check in and then we'll kind of roll in after our warm up into part A, but we'll make sure everyone's pretty clear about going on. All right. But first, more coffee. All right. Okay. Different direction. Why don't you have 10 or so, give or take, it's okay if it's not exact. Alternating bird dogs, extend your leg, extend your arm, and then switch. A total of 10. Again, lie loss count. So approximately 10 is fine. And then it's early. So we're going to check in, see our hips feel at recess. So we're going to go toes forward, about shoulder width. It's going to lean back a little bit. We need a little space. Off to the side. We're going to switch. This is all meant to be gentle. So we need to stop at any point. So decrease your range of motion. Or just maybe stay on one side and stretch and hold 
and do that. That's fine. And a fine substitution. And last little piece, just to open up the front half of the body. So we're gonna do a little up dog, right? So we're gonna start on our belly and then just go ahead and just either, we'll say cobra or up dog, meaning, right? You can always go, or sorry, it's a puppy pose. I forgot what you call it. Basically go from our pushing position, just gently raise up the chest. If that's too much. You can go to your elbows, okay? Either way, we're opening up the hips or you can extend that a little bit and open up and bring the chest and hips up a little bit. Do that. Let's go send your hips back in the child's pose. So our upper back opener or thoracic opener means the same thing. Two options. We can have the elbow bent or elbow straight. So we're going to have, when I have my hand, I can have my hand behind my head. Like I'm doing you know, like a cruncher, like it's bent. And I can rotate my elbow towards my opposite elbow and then towards the ceiling. That's option one, right? Option two, we've done this one before, is threading the needle where I straighten my arm instead. Now you can't see my hand, but it's up there. I'm gonna bring it through this gap and rotate as much as I'm comfortable. Both are a great option. Either way, let's do three reps per side. So either you have your elbow bent, right? Or you have your arm straight. But I want to see three to five reps per side. Noticing a difference? If there is one. I definitely have differences. I skipped my right side, so I'm going to go ahead and finish that off. Okay. Nice work. So what we're gonna do next, we are gonna go ahead and start working on balance or just checking on our balance. So we're gonna actually allude to our split squats by doing lunge steps. You may step forward or backwards, whichever way you find more challenging from a balance perspective, not from a motor control perspective. So backwards lunges. Okay, let's go ahead and alternate and do 10. Or 10, sorry, 10 total. So find your feet stance that's about shoulder width. Stepping back, find your balance first. Squeeze your butt and then go down. Whoop, stay in the balance. It's early for me. Let's do 10 total. Your back knee is on, you touch the ground. You need to be near something to catch yourself with or for balance, that's okay. Putting 10 total reps. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, so we have our split squats, right? This can be done kind of in that split, in that lunge shape, or this can be done with your foot elevated. So the primary difference between what we just did and what you're going to do is we're not going to 
bring the feet back together each time. We're going to stay in that split stance, right? One foot in front of the other. And most of our weight will be on our front leg. Okay. So whether your foot's lifted or not, okay, I'll go hips down for this. So I'll go, actually I'll go this way for a demonstration, different way. So front leg, working leg, back leg, standing leg, right? Or non-standing leg. If I'm split squatting here, I have weights in hand, hopefully. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and sit down on my left leg like I'm squatting. My left, my right kind of just hanging out. I'm not standing all the way up. That's okay. I'm going to keep it all the way at my front leg. If I stood all the way up, I'm going to load the back leg, which is not the end of the world. It's just not ideal. Okay, not in this case. Same thing. You can lift the back leg. Okay, so we can lift the back leg. Right, toes are laces or toes. I'm gonna do the same thing. It's a bit far for me. Get a little closer. I'll talk about setup shortly and do the same thing. Eight to ten. So to set this up, you can sit at the edge of your seat. And I'm off the camera here. Pick your working leg. That's this one. I'm gonna assist myself to get up. And then you can kind of look behind you or hang on something you need to. And then this is a bit long for me, meaning I feel like my hip is a little too open. I just feel off balance. You'll know. If it feels a little off, go ahead and just scoot a little closer. Or go a little farther away. Okay. But that's just a guideline for setup. Let's try. A, let's actually try your first set on weighted Arisa. Your range of motion is not meant to be the same depth as a full goblet squat, meaning I'm not looking for this depth. Right? Okay. Um, because it's going to vary. Um, so it's okay if you find one leg is harder than the other. Um, either way. Okay. Let's have you start with eight to 10 reps. You can keep your foot down. Either foot lifted is actually a great balance exercise. I'd recommend most people do it unweighted to start. And then on your following two rounds, you can then maybe add weight if you feel good. Okay. So foot down. Like you have now, Risa, it's going to be a little more, you could put weight on that, meaning you could add load for a challenge. If you're more of a balance drill, more then you could lift your foot up on your couch or your seat. Um, let's do eight to 10 reps per leg. So it can be airplane in your hands for balance. Have something nearby like a chair, if that you find that helpful. With your full, your full foot, front foot planted on the ground. Every time. Which really handy if you have like a broomstick or like a Swiffer or whatever. Just kind of use that to balance if you need to. There you go. Hips, knees, and ankles stay in a nice straight line. Excellent. Goblet squats, grab your weight if you have one, okay? Um, Two-footed squat, right? If you have two lighter weights, you can carry two lighter weights on your shoulders. I have one, that's fine. And then from here, I know you can't see my door, so that's okay. Go from the side, squatting down, standing up. Feet, shoulder hip width, chest is up. Imagine a name tag on your chest. I should be able to see it. For a dumbbell, just an option. If you like holding it this way instead, you can hold it this way instead of. If this is the not a right or a wrong, this is what do you like better, frankly. Um, so feel free to use both. 10, please, 10 goblet squats. These all be air squats. These be unweighted. Followed by, this is where we have the or. So we have more active piece, a push up with rotation. Okay. Or your thoracic or upper back openers that we did in the warm up. Okay. If you're doing that, we're doing five per side. If you're doing a more active version, you're going to go ahead and do a push up of some kind. 
Um, so, silly mat has not pulled out yet. So you're gonna go ahead and do your push up. So either you're gonna go ahead and do a full on push up rotation. Okay, not full. You can rotate as much, or I'll do this on the same side. Use your knees. Push up. Rotate. Of course, you'll switch sides, but I want to make sure I face the camera the whole time. So each rep, so you push up, rotate, push up, rotate the opposite side. Doing a total of 10, resting as needed within their set of 10. You can also elevate your hands in your push-up if you have some sturdy, sturdier furniture around, like a bench. But for those of us in our living rooms, it's not may not be as much of an option. So No fresh boss. This work. So a total of ten. Every time you rotate reset, you've done one in this case. Take your time through these. That's your first set. You're gonna do two more. If you need to reduce the number of push-ups, that's an option. Okay. That, that rotation good. adds a fair amount of time under tension. So you, we've doing a lot of push-ups, which is a good thing, but you'll probably notice it's not the same as just dun, 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 yeah. dun. you're like, no, I'm gonna go ahead now, I'm gonna go ahead, sing, I'm gonna go wah, wah. right. So it's just it's just more time under tension on that. And that's not a bad thing. So if that 10 feels like a lot, I like the rotation piece. Maybe you go do eight or you do six or something that feels a little more appropriate or, or just rest. So I did this yesterday. I rested, you know, I did five rested, three rested, two. My pushups are terrible. So <laughs> I took a lot of breaks, but I still did 10. <laughs> Eventually, they just took a little longer than I'd like to admit. Um, so certainly an option. That's round one. We have two more of those. We're gonna go back to those split squats. If you like the leg lifted, I think that's great, Arisa. They look great. If you need to, just keep the weights out of it, right? You could just balance. And of course, I think it's obvious to say, but if you like you're gonna fall over, just pick your foot up and stand up. No need to fall over, okay? Um, if you do wanna try adding weight, you can. Um, you can, I would load Put the weight in the hand you feel most comfortable with. Meaning, right, if you have your right leg standing, you might want to hold left-handed. For some people, they like to hold the same as their standing leg, but whatever you're more comfortable with. Oh, so not both. You can do both. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so your weight's a little lighter, right? I so you have, I you have, yeah, perfect, yeah. I was thinking if you had like 10, 15, 20 pounds, but yes, two is fine. Okay. Yeah. Two wits are fine. Big toe, pink toe, heel, nice active foot position. So if you have an arch, you can see it. You want that off the ground or as active as it can be. Line up with hips, knees, and ankles. 
This goes for that split squat with the foot down as well. And just a public service announcement for those doing Bulgarian split squats, let your foot lifted. When you change your foot position, don't hop forward. Um, it's easier to step forward and step backwards to control your distance from your object versus hopping. It's not the end of the world, but I wouldn't recommend it. That's predictable. Good. After the split squats, again, that's eight to 10 per side, matching your fatigue. We're gonna do 10 goblet squats. Or if you have two lighter weights like a reset, two, so 10 front squats. Biggest difference is we have on the shoulders versus in front of the chest. Love. And then Tabby's favorite, push-ups. If you can, lay all the way down. Even if you're warming up into your plank shape, meaning, right, it's not a perfect plank position on the way up or down, try and if you can, lay down on the ground and then gently push yourself back up. You can use your knees. Go ahead, find that plank or knee position and then rotate. You can do the rotation from your knees or from a full plank shape. I think it's easier from a plank shape though. Nice job. Go ahead and keep that range of motion yourself. That means, that means taking a break or resting, right? So the elbow bend is getting a little bit shallow. Unless that obviously it's pain related. Um, with that, reduce your reps. So I'd rather you get all the way down and then all the way up, but do less of them than do all 10 of them and have your elbow or just being like doing like a do a doing a partial rep. Okay. So wherever rep you're on, you can kind of by the side, great, I did my eight or my six, and I'm getting all the way down all the way up versus 10 partial, right? Okay, that was six. Okay. Good. Yeah, and that might be enough, right? That rotation adds enough time under tension that that might feel like your normal, quotations, normal 10 push-ups, right? Without any extra stuff. Um, so, you know, these numbers that I put down are all within a progression. But if you started at four push-ups, and then, you know, or less than 10, this might be something that you need to, you know, secure yourself down for. That's fine. Uh, and also listen to your body. It's up to you. Um, doing something is still better than doing nothing, unless your doctor says otherwise. Or your physical therapist. There you go. Yeah, with the push-ups in general, I prefer seeing full range of motion if that's pain-free, as in laying down and back to that plank shape and doing less of them. 
um, or assisting them in doing less versus a slight bend of the elbow. But there go. Lovely. We have our two footed squats. So these can be unweighted. If you're recovering, add some weight. If you have options to increase that weight, you certainly can. Lovely. Good news. This is your final set. So set number three. For anyone who's doing this and wants to you feel good, you want to do four, by all means, do four. Um, I want to open that up to anyone who's feeling good about this. All the way down. All the way down. There you go. For better, for worse, that high vis sure is giving really good sense of your depth when you do push ups. <laughs> so it's very helpful. Good. Knees all the way down. Yeah. yeah nice job. Yeah, so we have a break between the push-up and the rotation piece too. Nice job. Switching sides every time you rotate. Yeah, that's great. That warm-up was totally fine. Especially if you get tired. Okay. Good. Rest. Well deserved. Okay. Yeah, that was six or seven. I lost count. That's okay. You like I said, it's more than five. Yeah. Less than ten. Okay. Um. So I'll talk about this next piece. Okay. Um. We have uh dumbbell. So this is another option. Well, I see. You have an or here. So originally. And ideally, we are doing eight per side, okay? If you have one weight or eight total, if you have two, I'll demonstrate both. Dumbbell floor press. This can be done with the hips raised or the hips down, okay? So that's option one. I'll demonstrate that first before I talk about the next thing. So your floor press looks like your push-up, except we're just laying on our back here. So what I wanna focus on here, besides having some weights in hand, if we have the option, is when we're doing our push-up, our shoulders are moving, keep like sort of forward and back, right? So your back is going from shoulder blades apart, shoulder blades together, right? So flexing here. That's totally normal. That's actually a really good organic thing. Okay. That's that's the shoulder should be doing that, assuming it's healthy. What we're gonna do on the floor press is we're actually going to do the exact opposite of arrow, okay? So if you're on a bike, road bike or TT bike, it's the exact inverse of this or this, where we're trying to get air to go over our back. We're trying to be as the least aerodynamically possible, okay? So 
you can think two. Uh, so we have two extremes. We have aerodynamics, right? On drop bars and TT, or we have, I'm a big sail and I'm catching wind and we're catching wind here. That's what we're doing. Or think superhero. However, I think about it. Okay. Um, what you're going to notice is you, when we do this, that my shoulder is going to stay where it is. So my shoulders are pinned back. I measure, I'm squeezing a, sh a quarter to my shoulder blades. And when I go to press, when I'm lying down, I'm doing this and I'm doing this. I'm not doing this. This is fine by the way, but we're not doing that with the floor press. So the primary difference is it's a much more fixed shoulder position. So it looks something like this. So with one dumbbell, I'm lying down. So my shoulder forward looks like this. My shoulder back looks like this. My rib cage might come up, that's okay. This gap is fine. I'm gonna keep this back. I'm gonna touch my elbow to the ground. I have a little gap between my elbow and my waist. I'm gonna press back up. Right? If you wanna add a little range of motion, you can go to here. You don't have to, but this is an option, okay? If you have a bench at home, you can dumbbell bench. So that's eight per side or Two weights, lower shoulders back, touch, press. So at the top, my chest is actually pretty popped up, right? That's okay. That's the nature of that shoulder position. Um, that is your floor press. Second option, pressing, you've done enough push-ups, you're toast, fine. We're gonna do plank pull-throughs. So this is gonna be your uh, alternative. Um, where you're going to have your dumbbell behind your wrist reach across. So left hand reaches over to the right, right hand reaches over to the left. So we're holding a plank position. But let's reach, so let's have you try the floor press. If that feels a bit, if you have two weights, great. Let's go to heavy lunge, shoulder blade to back. So imagine your chest is opening up. Let's go ahead and instead of going elbows out and wide, just drop the elbows down. So if you have the grip here, just drop the elbow down by your waist. Or yeah, there you go. I'll explain what you're doing before. So two weights or one, it's up to you. Sometimes one dumbbell is easier to control. That's just the bits of, you focus on one side only, but two is a good motor control drill. Doing eight total there, recess, since you have two weights. So what I was trying to tell you before, you're doing a great job, by the way. Shoulders back, feels like, it might feel like a lot of work on the kind of shoulder blades, the sort of in between your shoulder blades. That's not a bad thing. Those are little spinal, or, sorry, trape your traps are, uh, supporting muscles. They're not quite as big or strong as shoulders and lats. So if you're doing this, you're like, oh man, I just feel like right there. That's fine. That's normal because it's tired. Um, it fatigues faster. What were you doing before? So you were coming down out. Yeah. Yeah. That was more of a, somewhere between, I want, how do I describe this? It's this, there's a movement called like a chest fly where people will bring the weight out and okay. bring the weight in or like if you see it at the YMCA like the hug machine <laughs> that's what Nikki calls it <laughs> but it's essentially where you're using you're kind of bringing your arms out like wings and squeezing them in and that's all about the chest and the pecs versus and you're doing a baby version of that versus just bringing it down so I think you just did your push-up but you're laying on your back okay Right. So your arm, they call this your arm slot, this, this angle between your elbow and your waist can be here. It could be here. There's nothing inherently wrong with any of those. That's just a matter of style. What we want to make sure both on the push up and the floor press is whether I'm pushing up here, military style, I tend to be here. That's just my thing. If you're a gymnast or a yogi, you're probably here more tricep -y is that the shoulder stays behind the pec. So the shoulder's not translating forward in either the push-up or the floor press. Okay. 
Okay. Good God. Okay. Let's continue going while these goons are here. <laughs> we love you, Arisa. Oh, love you too, Alex. <laughs> okay. And Ricky. So, okay. Um so let's go ahead and do two more sets of this, right? But just trying to keep the elbows at a comfortable angle, whatever that is, right? That's gonna be up to the person. Some people like it here, some people like it here, some people so I'm somewhere in the middle. I'm at about 45 degrees. That's up to you. I'm not really fussed as long as the shoulders, you know, are where they need to be. So just think you're going to keep this, the elbow's going to, from the side, it's going to be less out here and more just back. All right. So let's try that. Let's do that again okay. with your dumbbells. If it helps, you can do one arm at a time. Sometimes that can be helpful just to focus on one side. I can't, I know I'm going to forget my count, so I might as well just do both together. Great. Let's do both. Squeeze your upper back like you're trying to squeeze a quarter between your shoulder plates. Good. Yeah. Might feel artificially stiff. That's okay. Lovely. Good. How'd that feel? Different? Same? Yeah. Worse? Yeah. Definitely um, different and um, a little less stable, I guess. It. Hmm. Um, I had to really think about keeping my my hands stable. I guess not as stable as like. Yeah, I definitely usually do have my my what is it? My elbows out more. But yeah, that's fine. More. You can do that too. I want to make just make it clear. I'm not suggesting or telling you that you can't do things from a wider, I will say, grip or stance on your hands. So this is my push up. You can do a push up here. Oh. Also do a push up here. You could do, you know, I'm, there's variations on everything. Okay. So I'm not saying it's a no. Find your distance, your width that you like. Okay. That's all. So in the floor, in the floor press, that could be here. Right? That could be here but it's not here okay. that's all i mean we're not doing a chest fly where we're going here to here it's not like a wing it's just a push okay that's all so you can go as wide as you like again as long as we're not doing this okay all right um so yeah it's it's going to be a hard one to do but i think it's I like it because it's the exact opposite. So in arrow, it's this. Right. We're tucked or small, chins down if you can, even in drop bars. And this is, oh, I'm getting out of arrow. I'm stretching. I'm sitting up. Right. Now that's a big extreme, but basically I'm just standing up tall for all intents and purposes. So we're just working both sides. We've stretched here in arrow and we're opening up here and supporting through here. So it's good to have both. You need to be able to do both. And that's super helpful. Let's 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 pause on that. I know it's only two sets, but I want to make sure that we just touch part C both for your sake, but also other people's, right? So we only have about Ooh, okay. Yes. We're just gonna review this together. And then you're welcome to do it, Arisa, or head out. Okay. So this think of this more as we're just for you cooling down, for others, this can be a workout, okay? We're just gonna review the movements though. We have alternating lunges, which I think at this point you're fairly familiar with. You can step forward or backwards, I don't care. Um, if lunging is a problem, we can air squat. Or maybe honestly, if it's squatting, if you've had enough volume, remove it all together, okay? That's fine. Alternating V-ups, right? We're gonna be laying down. We've done this in a tuck-up version before. 
I really can't reach above my head, but bear with me. So we're going to, we, in the past, we've reached opposite hand, opposite foot. Okay. The alternating V up is going to be slightly different in that I'm going to raise my leg. Or sorry, raise my chest to touch. I say touch. If you can't touch your toes, keep your reaching. It's a harder version. So if you need to just stick with the bent knee version, that's fine. All right? So that's going to be your alternating V up. Followed by your Supermans, right? Mm -hmm. This is just, we have two variations of this, a lot of variations today. One is just extension, feet and arms. That means feet and arms go up. I'll go ahead and blank because I can't fit my room here. So that means both feet and arms come up. So my toes are together. I'm reaching forward, but I'm also gently reaching up. That's option one. Option two is just the upper back or is it just the torso where it's going to be, I can rest my head and just raise my hands. So feet can stay on the ground, right? That tends to be like, I would say waist or hips and up, squeeze your butt when you do this to protect the low back, right? Or you can go full feet and hands. There's no wrong answer. I'll have you do 10 just for practice reset and then you talk about what we can do. So for those of you doing part C, you're going to work for 45 seconds and you're going to rest for 15 so you can just set your timer or look at a digital clock. Um, you're going to repeat this, these three things. You're only doing one thing per minute. So starting with the alternating lunges, I was able to complete about 16-ish um, okay. comfortably. Um, that number can go down, by the way. That's just some context. Alternating V-ups, again, around 16, although I did take a few more breaks than I did on the lunges. So you can rest for those. And Superman's, um, same thing, rest as needed, but I was able to complete around that 16 rep mark. Okay, so... Those are your pieces of information, right? Um, let's go ahead and pause for a second. Um, so I think, Arisa, since you're here in person, um, good work with the push-ups and the, and the floor press. I know that it's weird to put two things together that are very similar. It's like lunges and split squats. They're technically different. <laughs> But understanding the difference can be challenging or maybe intellectual understanding, but getting the body to follow. Um, so ultimately, just think of it this way. In the push-up, the shoulder moves full of full range of motion, mm -hmm. right? Internal rotation, external rotation, you're reaching, you're pulling back. That's all fair game in a push-up. It should be. In a bench press, imagine Arisa as a robot. And we don't have that shoulder joint anymore. We just have a this. We have a hinge, right? That a more fixed shoulder position is going to be your bench press, your floor press, your whatever, right? So when your your belly button's facing up, right? I'm looking at the ceiling, whether I'm on a bench or the floor. I'm a robot, right? When I'm doing push-ups, I'm human. I'm I've got my full, you know, I can bend, I can flex. Okay. I'm made of soft things versus metal. Does that make sense? Um, so those are, I mean, that's the primary difference between those two things, um, besides direction, of course. Um, beautiful work today. It is, we're about two minutes early, so I'm going to let you, I know you, you know, have to get into the office and all that good stuff. Um, to the office. All right. All right, Mickey Brown, you want to be annoying now? Come here. Hello. Also, she's been here the whole time. Look at her. Look at her. Oh, just observing. <laughs> she's been on her throne. <laughs> Not joining the camera. Okay. <laughs> she's been a circle cat for a while. Um, good work today. Um, we'll continue on this. So we'll practice again. 
Um, so don't worry about that. But Why am we'll I just sort of start to learn the differences and allow to allow us to use both, you know, to our benefit. Um, okay. Beautiful work today. I'll see you hopefully next week. Yes. All right. Thank, thank you. Bye, Risa. Take care. Bye, Nikki. <laughs>